a lot of people don't see. <clears throat> but this was originally slated to get seed and straw. Due to the slopes, we're just going to go ahead and do sod so it'll look right. Yes, yeah, so it'll have bushes and plantings. They're planting them now as we speak. Uh, this is on the maintenance side. This area is here where we'll park the golf cart, so they'll be in a covered area. Entrance to the wood shop, separate entrance. Entrance to maintenance, double doors for the maintenance shop. This was the area back here in the back that I was telling you they cleaned up. <coughs> one end, kind of a closer view of the cleanup in the back area, getting ready. Okay, I know y'all have seen that one before, the rendering, yep, go to this button. So this is kind of where the auditorium is right now. I'm happy to say I met with the crews this morning and talked to them, and they're putting up the video screen today as we speak. Uh, got delayed about a week on that because all their crews were in Atlanta. They said there was a football game or something. That they didn't <laughs> so on their way back from Atlanta, on their way back home to Des Moines, they decided to stop and do some work. <laughs> so as you can see, the hearing loop is in place. So they put that under the carpet. It's kind of the left side. I don't know which stage right, stage left. Platform left, platform right. Uh, but they are three distinct hearing loops. So you'll be able to use, if you're in, if the partition's shut and you're in here having a meeting, the hearing loop will work with the uh, your hearing aids and such. You may have to adjust the volume, as they tell me, because sometimes it'll pick up a higher volume, so you may have to tweak the volume a little bit. But these, these will actually function individually. Now, if you're sitting right here, you may get some bleed over. But as long as you're over here in the proper field, you should be okay. I will tell you that five years ago, the technology was not where it is today. So this is something that they picked up on and they've actually got the control over it better. So you can actually get some you know, separation of the signals. So how did the room the section survive physically. This, this little area right here, this track in the ceiling, there's a folding partition. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, if you think of these folding partitions, but 10 times as big and they're fabric and they've got acoustical, they're built in with acoustic panels and such. <coughs> and they'll have exit doors in them so you can exit for emergencies <laughs> and things of that nature. But then they can fold and collapse into the wall and they're hid or they can be fully open or fully uh, in position where they create the separation. Uh, bathrooms in the area, they're doing the tile. So this is just, I didn't want to get too, it's hard to get too much detail. I mean, I know people don't want to look at urinals and toilets and stuff, but the gist of this is the tiles up, tiles in place, tiles on the floor. They're working on, they're doing the carpet tomorrow. Uh, if not tomorrow, it'll be uh, by Friday, they'll have the carpet in, that's what they tell me. And, you know, of course, the glass tiles going on at the vanities. This area will be mirrors. <laughs> Dining room, of course, this is the aerial view of the courtyard. Fire, fire pit here next to outdoor dining. They haven't put the awnings up yet or the retractable covers. They're shade screens, so don't think that you're going to sit out there in a rainstorm and not get wet. It's mainly for shade, so it's a shade screen that'll go up. And it is retractable. <coughs> and of course, the connector will have seating in here. Putting green, they finished that. So this putting green surface, the uh, croquet court, or activity field, it'll be a similar artificial turf surface. Uh, along with the bocce ball court. It'll be an artificial surface. This is kind of looking from the other direction. Of course, we are in here right now. So to get from where we are to the pool. Oh, you just asked a magical question. I, was, I just remembered you. 
I was supposed to deliver some maps. So to kind of, I forgot it, my fault. So from here, if you're right here to get to the pool, you can go out this door and turn left and walk down the hallway and you will come through this connector out of Redbud that will connect you to the pool and that's a dry connection. So you're not out in the weather. It's a pretty day, you can come right out the double doors right here, walk straight across and walk to either side and get into the pool. Likewise with the salon. There's also a connector or walkway along the side of the dining, but it's not totally covered, but you do have a large overhang. So if it's not a blowing rain, you should be okay. And there's the outdoor dining area with the fire pit stub up, which I don't know when that's coming, but the grill area. As you can see, a lot of the plantings have already started taking place in the courtyard. The putting green. And yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine holes. <laughs> Wanted to make sure. We, I mean, guys or whoever, the golfers, yeah, you could probably chip off this fringe a little bit, but we intentionally did not want to create a chipping zone. I don't think the residents in Redbud, grandkid come over and get a little overzealous on the chipping area. You know, we might get some golf balls and some patios. So we, we intentionally left that off. Dining room, rendering. And where we're at right now, they're holding off on this floor. It'll probably go down the first of the week. Hmm. They're just waiting to the last minute, get everything out of there and get it done. That's so looking back through. Wood, if this area right here is vinyl planking and this area here is carpet. And then the area around the buffet, it's kind of a vinyl planking hard surface in that area. So this is the new buffet area that is serviced from the back kitchen here. So this will be very accessible and very user friendly. And it's heated and cooled by elements underneath. So you drop it in there, you turn it to hot or cold, you don't have to use the sterno or anything like that anymore. And this is the additional bar that we put in the back area. Of course, there'll be a large TV here in the middle and there'll be a few bar stools, plus they'll be sitting right outside the area there. They got the counter in for the display kitchen, so you can pull up a, I don't know what you call it, it's a, somewhere between a chair and a bar stool, kind of a, the toss chairs. You can pull right up to the counter, you can eat your dinner there and watch them cook. This is the clinic. Uh, the only reason I included the clinic here is that's technically part of the dining room expansion in the permit phase. So if anybody has ventured down the hallway, like going to Summerfield, you get to that plastic wall, this is Oz on the other side of the plastic curtain. <laughs> so this is what's happening behind the, behind the plastic. So this is the new entry area for the clinic, waiting area, Reception desk. Uh, this would be looking out of the typical exam room. And this is looking behind the reception desk. Assisted living. Courtyard. Carpeting's down in the hallways. I guess this guy's checking his email. Uh, but the, uh, the carpet is down in the hallways, all the rooms, the floors are finished, the bathroom tiles, all that's done. It's just tweaking out the final finishes. It's really hard to take a photo and do it justice. So but I, I, I took a few, but it just didn't really look appealing. Uh, this is the dining room area here, and this will be the private dining back here. In the assisted living. This is the living area. So there would be a, like a living room there that has a door to the courtyard. And this is the counter 
at the uh, activity area for the storage room. This is the courtyard for assisted living. They still have to put the fence up across here. And so you'll be able to sit in this courtyard and you'll be able to see the neighbors in the skilled nurse, nursing courtyard, but they're not physically connected. They are connected with a gate for emergency egress only. So unless you know the code, you're gonna set off an alarm if somebody comes out of the skilled nursing, but at least they're all open and visible to each other. I believe this one is a solid wall though. Healthy Life Center, I uh, touched on the, the court areas. What else is in the Healthy Life Center? What, where does Irving located? Uh, this whole building is the Healthy Life Center and Wellness. And contained in there is the pool, group exercise, fitness room. Uh, there's a lobby area. There's a beverage station, maybe you know, like cucumber water or such. And yes, there will be separate locker rooms uh, for men's and women's. And you have to go through the locker room to access the pool. So if you're going there to go swimming, you have to go through the locker room. And you can change there and you have lockers. Yes, sir. Public um, toilet areas for men and women. Are the, you, um, I don't forget what it's called. Are you designing it where you press a button on the, on the toilet seat and you got any plastic? No, we do not have that. You it's typically like that. what we have right now. It's just, it's um, not the, doesn't have the plastic seat or the, I know what you're talking yes. about, the covers that go on the yeah. toilet seats that work a lot of sanitary purposes. Yeah, no, they don't have those on it. Will there be showers in the dressing room? Yes, ma'am. Multiple showers, men's and women's, and they're not combined. <laughs> we did keep a little bit of separation, but so, yes. Does that mean that you can't open that center, including the school, until everything's done? Yes, ma'am. The whole building has to be done before we can open it up, and. We'll, we'll, the first thing we'll get is what's called a temporary certificate of occupancy. And depending upon the timing, they may go ahead and give us a temporary certificate of occupancy with the condition we can't have public, which that gives us the ability to move our furnishings in. And once we get everything in place, then they'll come back and give us a TCO that will allow the public, public to access it. Does that make sense? But it'll, we're, believe me, we're pushing to get it open as quick as possible. <clears throat> right now, the first thing that's scheduled to be turned over is the auditorium, and then this would follow about a week or two behind. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Are we the public? Yes, ma'am, you're the public. Oh, okay. Public being residents or non-staff non personnel. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, there's not a hot tub. Yes, ma'am. Out here? Yes, there's no covers going on that. That is what it is. It's just a pergola, shade structure. I guess if you laid out there and you were sunbathing, you might come out with stripes. So don't fall asleep on the sun terrace. Was that a Chester Cheeto commercial or something where you laid in the sun? But yeah, it, it's open, open air. And right now the contractor has already moved and there's a chain link fence. This fence that was over here has now been moved down along this side with the intent when we turn this over, they still have access construction wise to the uh, red bud, but we still have access to this area. This is sort of the outdoor, outside area looking back towards it. This is the fitness room. And yes, there's floor outlets for the treadmills, TVs, it'll be wall mounted. And this one does have a direct door to the sun terrace, but also the group exercise room can go outside 
and they can walk down the sidewalk and they could do Tai Chi or rope or yoga, whatever on the same terrace. So they could create an outdoor functional environment also. So do you have the ability to do multiple exercise going on at the same time? Theoretically, yes, ma'am. I mean, you could have an exercise class going on in here and you could have an exercise class going on in the sun terrace and you could also have pool aerobics going on at the same time. So just depending on how they staff it and they work it, but yes, it's, it's not one or the other. So it could all happen simultaneously. Believe it or not, the finished floor is down and it's under, they got it protected under all this car, cardboard and such. So this wall will have the mirror wall and the ballet bar on this side. So this is where we were a while back on the pool, being the rendering, comparing it to the rendering. And this is kind of where we're at right now. So there's water in the pool and you're getting it all cleaned up and cleaned out, getting it ready to turn over. The next thing to go on is the actual pool deck. That'll be the next thing. And once they get the pool deck on, they'll be done with the pool pretty much. Where's the entry to the pool? It is right here through this doorway. No, I mean into the pool. Is it oh, it's right here, the stairs. Yeah, okay. So it's kind of right here. Mm -hmm. Now, will there be a lifeguard? No, ma'am. No lifeguard. No lifeguard on duty. No. Anytime. Well, unless the instructor's in there doing an aerobics class, they'll be in the water and they'll be out there then. But I'm sure they're going to set pool hours and things of that nature. Too. And then back here in the back will be a nice sitting area that'll have uh, pool furniture in it where you can just kind of sit and hang out. Jeff, where is the lift? It will go back in here on this corner. The it's what? an insert that goes in the slab. Sure. The what? The lift. chair lift. lift. Oh. They're asking about the chair lift uh, for handicap access. Yes, sir. Say so you're doing strokes in the pool and you have a cramp and there's no lifeguard on duty. And what happens? Well, <laughs> um, the let's see if I got a picture. Right back here on the wall, there's a very large window in the office area, so they will be able to visually watch when they're in the office to watch activity and see the people in there. So, but there are emergency pull cords around the perimeter of the pool. <laughs> Plus, there's an emergency 911. There's phones right on the inside. Yes, ma'am. How deep is the pool at the deepest point? Uh, I believe it's four foot six. <laughs> That's on the lap side, and then it's three foot six. <laughs> it slopes from here to here. This is the four foot six, and then it slopes up to the three foot six. Basically, so it's a uh, lower water. So you could you could walk along here to adjust where you want the water level on you for doing aerobics and such, you're not in a fixed elevation. So you will have some flexibility if you want to stand in deeper water, you can work your way back. But of course, there's a rope separating the lap swimming from the aerobics area. Well, it's shallow enough that only some of us would drown. I was going to say that, but I think he wants to get mad at me. I could be one of them. But... So this is the sitting area that's, if you look, just went straight across, you could see the octagon shape sticking out. So this is the sitting area there. There'll be chairs and couches and tables. Plus there'll be a small like uh, French bistro type sitting area. I think, yeah, and there's the, the counter for the beverage station. So that's got tile on it. And this is a wood type wall, very decorative. I can't really do it justice in the photos, but it's a really pretty area. You know, you got to, the ceiling matches the ceiling in the pool. So that's brought into that space also. So it's a very open area. Salon. We will have two styling stations and two pedicure stations. 
air dryers along the wall, workroom, and manicure right here on this other side of the wall. And this door opens up to the massage room. And this corridor connects to the back corridor, which is also right across the hall with a big tile wall. And there's men's and women's restroom entrances. So you could go to the restrooms and not go through the locker rooms, but you have to go through the restrooms to get to the locker rooms. Does that make sense? Okay. Red bud. Of course, this will be parking area here, plus there's parking along here, and this will also have parking down through here. Our current fitness trailer in the alley. They started the slab and stopped. Don't know why. And as you can see, they've already started the planning in, along the south side and around Red Bud. The alley. This is the south courtyard. And since this has been taken, they've already started their planning. That's what these guys here are doing is the planning, landscaping and such. This is taken from the second, no, it's third floor. Went up to the third floor apartment, took a picture out into the courtyard. So you can see the activity. These guys are actually digging the holes for the trees and such that are gonna go in there. This is the North Courtyard. One of the neat features here, this, these are mounds of dirt. So there's like probably four foot mounds. So it creates a terrain and kind of defines the space a little bit rather than just a flat grass area, if that makes sense. And this right here is the transformer we got yet. Where's the box Where's that at? It looks like you're upstairs there. Here? It says rectangle here for the Right here? Yeah, this right here is all porta johns right now. But this is stair access or you have any job access. So it's, you can literally get around this whole campus in a wheelchair and get around and access all the different elements, even our bocce ball court and our uh, croquet court is zero level access. So it's very accessible. Jeff, are you going to teach us how to play bo bocce ball? <laughs> yeah. I, I personally don't know how to play, but we've got a transportation guy. I know that uh, Jack, I think he actually plays in tournaments and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the steps will have a rally. They just, they wait to the last minute to put those in. Correct. And this was taken from one of the apartments looking back down the alley. As you can see, it's a very busy area, a lot of dumpsters. Start using it for the first of March. But we'll be able to get in and start training staff and such so that we can have you know proper training on it how to use the sound system, how to use the video screen, how to operate the doors and all that. So all that will be taking place before we actually take use of it fully and open it up to the public. Yes, ma'am. How deep is the platform? I don't know the exact name, number, but I know that my maximum occupancy on the platform is 38 people. So I can put up to 38 people by fire code on the platform. Chairs, standing, however you want to put them up there. But that's for the performers. Performers. Yes. So I can have up to 38 up there. There'll be a sign on the wall that says maximum occupancy, 38 people. Persons. The 
question is, is there, are there two doors between the auditorium and our existing building? There's one set of doors, pair doors, back by the, you know, I always call it the bistro, the market area there, where the plywood wall is. There'll be double doors there, and you'll go into what is like a vestibule, which will be two double doors that go to the outside, or you can go straight and go on into the pre-function area of the auditorium. And there'll be double doors there also. So they, they can be on hold opens, so they can open the doors to where you can just walk straight into the pre-function area. And there are four doors actually into the auditorium. There's one on the left. There's one on the left and right of the sound stage or the sound booth area. And then there's one on the far right. So the, there'll be two in the middle and then one on each wing. Will there that, be an electronic opener on those doors into the no ma'am, there's no electronic openers, but they are on stops so that when we're having functions, we can open the door and leave the door open. Will the door that's in the existing right now, will that be um, a door that you have to have a key after hours to access? But not the first door by the bistro, but the, the next door is on the other side of the vestibule. So it's sort of like if you come into a vestibule here at the entry level, if you thought of if there was another door where the slider is here, that would be the double doors that go into the auditorium. Those will be lockable. <clears throat> so they can lock it down for after hours. But the door on the other side will always be open once you get in. The other control is on the outside. It's kind of hard to explain, I think. It, it's the same security you have right now. So, I mean, it's, you could actually lock with you, your exterior doors are locked and they'll be on a key, key fob to get in. So just like you would go into Dogwood now. So you'll have that type of security for after hours and such. But don't, if there's a function going on, I'm sure those doors will be open for free flow. Yes, ma'am. Right now, the, will the market remain the way it is? Yes, right now it's on. I, I have nothing in my program to change the market. Now, what JP comes up with down the road, I have no idea. He doesn't either. <laughs> he doesn't either. <laughs> I mean, he, I think he's tossed around some ideas, and I think they're just kind of in the idea phase of anything like that right now. What about the new dining area? New dining area will open the 1st of March. That's when they're scheduled to turn it over to us. Uh, one of our, as y'all know, I'm very open as can be. Uh, one of our problems is, is one of our vendors that we bought all of our food service equipment from, they went out of business. <laughs> and yeah, right in the middle of providing us with all of our equipment. So, and, it, and it's not just our community. I mean, this affects other LCS communities. And basically the guy was able to get our equipment that was slated for us, that we thought was slated for us, to get it on a truck before they padlocked the doors <laughs> for foreclosure, I guess. So they did get, we got the majority of it here and it's been installed. We've had to hire, the contractors had to hire another installer and there's a couple pieces of equipment that didn't come that we've had to, they've had to purchase on their own to fill in what was missing. So some of those items, they ship like the 7th and the 13th. So some of that is being pushed out a little bit because of that, those components. But it is very unfortunate that this company went out of business, but they did a lot of work with us. And the new company that they're trying to form was trying to do work and get in our graces, and they haven't done a very good job. So I'm not a very good proponent of them. So I'm not in support of them. Yeah. But we'll see. Yes, ma'am. Is there a kitchen in the auditorium? Yes, ma'am. There is a kitchen in the auditorium. The intent would be the full production cooking 
would happen in the main kitchen, but it has, the auditorium has its own dish room, dish area. They can do the minor prep, you know, like making salads and stuff of that nature. But, you know, say if you're cooking like the chicken or the salmon, they would pre-cook it and bring it over and they could plate it and serve it from the auditorium. So it'll still, plus we got all the warming trays, warming racks, ovens, combi ovens, got a hood to cook yeah. under, grill. So, I mean, it's a full functional kitchen, but the big mass part would be done in the main kitchen and then they would come over and serve it through the uh, auxiliary kitchen, I guess you could call it. Will all the serving in the new dining room be on that buffet or can we sit down and order and have people you will, Do you have to sit at that counter to order? No, ma'am. You, it's just like your dining room right now. Sit down, it's full service, order, what's it? Order off the menu per se. So, I mean, it's all food to, uh, food to order. So it'll still be under the same function. Probably have a different menu. So it'll be interesting. Yes, ma'am. Will there be a bar in the auditorium? Will there be a bar in the auditorium? We have a portable bar. Uh, simply because there's no need to build a permanent bar. It was going to take up space. So we have, we actually <laughs> would use a portable bar or we would use a, uh, I know they have portable buffets that they would use in case they did a buffet in the auditorium. So it, it's about as flexible as we could get it, but nothing permanent as a bar. But they can serve beverages in there too. Yes, ma'am. Coming, how would you access Red Bud coming down Heritage Way? Okay, you get to the four way stop. I guess it's four way. You can turn right to go in front of Magnolia, and then right past Magnolia, you can turn left, and that road will take you to the back, and you come in this way. Or you can actually go around by Summerfield and go that direction because all the road, the road will completely connect all the way around. So you'll have the road you can go either way. I think the primary function would be to send you, actually I drove around in a golf cart today kind of taking pictures of signs. I think the primary traffic path would have you turn right at Magnolia and then turn left at the end of Magnolia is the, the kind of the traffic pattern to get to Red Bud Park. In the back? Oh, out front? Okay. That that gravel area is city property, and that is where they're going to build the new police station. So they're waiting on us to finish, so I get the property till June, and then I have to give it back to them. And that's going to be the location for the new police station. I know we're going to demo, remove part of the road that connects back to Miss Canto's front door. Uh, I think that portion up onto the top of the hill is gonna be eliminated and reseeded and installed to maintain path access. And then I think we're, what we're planning on doing is letting the city keep that road there because they'll use that for their construction traffic. I actually met with the contractor doing the work and we walked it and he kind of liked it as is. He said, this is great. He said, this. I don't, I never get a job where I have an immediate lay down area and a place to stay to work because technically our parking lot is outside of the footprint of his building. So it's a perfect spot for him for the most part. So, but yeah, all that will become city property or it is city property will become part of the police station development. What's your plan to finish the pool area and all of that? It looks like it's done a lot of work to do. The plan to finish the, the pool area, uh, it looks like it's not done, but really the, the type of items that they've got left to do, uh, the infrastructure is done, so it's a lot of uh, painting and finishes, and that'll come together pretty quick. I mean, typically like right now in Red Bud, they're already doing the final painting on the third floor, they're putting all the carpet in, 
on the resident rooms, the apartments, the cabinets, the appliances, all that's happening in Red Bud from the top down. So, I mean, it, what you see on the outside will, will dress up real quick. A lot of it works with the, the, civil, the civil contractor to do the final grading and the plannings, and it'll come together pretty quick. Can you give us dates on these? Are these dates for you or are these dates for us? The dates that they give us are the dates that we're supposed to get temporary certificate of occupancy. There are external events that may push those out a little bit, but we would take occupancy and do our training and then we would open it up. I've been waiting for my moment because uh, the, the turnover dates when he said we will have the pool, the auditorium, the dining room, those are dates that construction, you know, we might get a temporary certificate of occupancy. That does not coincide with when we plan on having the space open for you to use. So those are two different dates. Um, our being able to open those is completely dependent on them hitting hitting the dates. Let, let's say the auditorium um, is available, you know, mid February. Well, the big doors that put it into three different rooms need to come after they're here. They need one full week to install them. Well, we could have access to the building, but we're not going to use it if they're going to be in there working on those things. So the auditorium, we're really hoping to get as close to the beginning of March as possible. That would be great. And um, Ashley's been working real hard trying to, we're gonna try and do little grand openings as each come on, on board. The, um, the Healthy Life Building, you know, we need to get in there. We need to make sure that we have the pool. Uh, we, we have the inspections and everything. So very likely it might be April 1 before that, even if it's, it's turned over to us earlier than that. The dining room. Once we get the dining room, we need at least two weeks to you know, get the dishes set up, the small wares. So I know um, I was just in a meeting, and don't hold me to this, Mr. Russell, he's recording me. Um, we're probably looking somewhere around uh, March 22nd, 23rd to have the, the new dining room available. So we'll communicate this, we, we don't know. Um, it's, it's getting close and it's gonna be here sooner than later. But, but his turnover has to happen so then we can get in there and learn how to work the TV screen and the sound and the hearing loop and the buffet and all these things. So, so that's kind of to be determined. And like I think I said on the last meeting, our intent is to get you in there as quick as possible. And you know, we, but we don't want to turn it over and then everything's broke. You know, we want to turn it over and it's functional and operational. Yeah, we've already experienced that. We don't need that again. <laughs> so we've been down that road. Any other questions? I apologize. I know I promised the uh, the floor plans, but I will get those. I'll get them. Next meeting for sure. Yes, ma'am. I hope that the person who's doing the landscaping between Magnolia and Redbud is a visionary. Because it seems to me that's a, like an alley. And I, they're going to have two little sidewalks for those tires of emergency. And so I put in a vote that special attention is placed on that area. The concern was is the landscaping between Redbud and Magnolia. I can tell you there's a, an extensive landscape plan that went in that, including the the hardscapes and the plantings. And the beauty of the we used a local landscape architect that is very well renowned, very well known, and is very good. And I've heard residents when I've mentioned his name that they said, oh yeah, he's great. So we do have good local <laughs> input. We intentionally, and before John even mentioned it, I intentionally did not want to use an out-of-state landscape architect. I do not want any more sycamore trees. <laughs> so, so, and believe it or not, I mean, I think Ms. Canto was on the landscape committee at the time, I believe, and I sat through meetings and 
got chastised for daylilies and liriope and those notes. I mean, it might have seemed like it went on deaf ears, but it didn't because when it came down to it, first time I met the landscape architect, I said, you will not plant sycamores, you will not plant daylilies, and you will not plant liriope. You know, so I was like, all those things that I was told not to do got regurgitated. Now, will one probably end up? I hope not, because I don't think they're in there. But uh, yeah, so I mean, Eddie's been out looking at the plantings and look, I mean, he's already made a move some adjustments. Huh? Yes, and LSI is actually doing the landscape. So they're, they're the ones that have the landscape contract with the community now. So basically, you know, we told them, you know, look, if you screw it up, it's going to be on you to fix it. So <laughs> they, they're very well aware of all that. So. I want to keep you. All right. The motion has been made. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>